Hey everyone, my name is Reeves and this is In The Know. If you're trying to figure out what you should do the first day after you leave your job, um, here's a few things that I can kind of share with you to help you out because I know this from my own personal experience that the day after you leave your job, when you're used to having a structure of things on a regular basis, you may find yourself in a position of not knowing what to do next. Here's some things you can think about. First, I want you to think about the location. Where is gonna be your base of operation? You may decide that you may have a virtual office location or a PO box, whatever the case may be. You can have a global business, but people wanna know exactly where is your place, your physical location? So this way they know where there's a, your base of operation is. Two, licenses. Here's a unique thing you may not realize. Look at whether or not you wanna establish your company in an unincorporated part of the county. Now, I'm not telling you, ooh, that's a jam away. I'm just saying that be mindful of where your business is because sometimes if you're in unincorporated areas, like if you could be in an area that doesn't technically have uh, its own, it's not It's not officially a city. It's not. It's known as something, but it's not really a city. So you may find yourself in a position where you may not necessarily have to get a city license. I say this with everything. Make sure you contact an attorney or contact license bureaus in your area to see that if you have a li that if you're looking to operate in a particular area, find out if the city covers that area because if you work in an unincorporated area, you may not necessarily need to get a license for the city. Number three, insurance. Real talk. I don't care what anybody tells you. Figure out early on what kind of insurance you need. That's gonna be one of those investments you need to worry about. Because if you're providing a service, or maybe you're working on products, whatever the case may be, you wanna make sure you protect yourself. Let me tell you, it's real easy, and I like to call it running dirty. To run dirty and not have insurance, but trust me, it's usually when you don't have insurance when weird stuff happens. So investigate and determine what type of insurance you may possibly need. Now, the fourth one is kind of silly to a degree. I'm still a big fan of business cards because there are still people out there that are tactile. They want to be able to have something in their hand. But the problem is, is that when you get a business card, you need to ask yourself, does it completely represent you? Because you want them to be able to find you. Phone number, social media presence, website, Whatever the case may be, where they can reach out and touch you, you want to give them as many options as possible. I know we're in this age now where you're using your smartphone and you probably don't even need them, but trust me, you'll be surprised the number of places where people still rely on business cards as a way to share information about professional contacts. Number five, websites. People are more apt to say, give me your card, let me check out your website so they can go there and they can surf your information. Invest in your website. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to have people look at your website and go, ugh, because that's what they're gonna reflect what you do. You wanna make sure you have a website that gives an accurate reflection of the stuff that you're doing. Number six, what do you actually do? You wanna make sure that the people know exactly what services that you provide, so this way they don't wanna, they don't wanna waste their time if they come to you. They need to know what you do. Seven, CPA. Get you a good, certified public account. I got one, that was literally one of my first investments. And now some of you are gonna say, why am I gonna do that? Because these are the people who are gonna keep your taxes straight, and what you wanna find out is what services they provide. Do they give you projections? Are they gonna do, do they have a business consulting aspect of what they do? Uh, how often do they provide you bookkeeping? If they ask them if they provide any bookkeeping experience for you, bookkeeping opportunities for you. You want somebody who's gonna help you manage your books. Because guess what? If you're a mechanic, you probably didn't go, I'm not saying you can't manage your books, but you probably didn't go to school to do that. You want to be able to utilize their expertise. CPA. Finally, pick a bank. Now, I've had these, it's kind of funny because there is a different opinions about which ones you should use. Do you use a big bank or do you use a little one? I have done both. Now, there are some, there, even credit unions. It really just depends. Here's what the school of thought is when people talk to you. If you have a smaller bank, it's easier for them to know you, which means it's easier for you in the course of working with them on a regular basis to be able to uh, possibly give you a loan should time arise. A bigger bank, 
you have greater access to services because they're bigger. I'm giving you all these tips because I want you to know ahead of time that the day after you leave your, your job, you're probably gonna to try to figure out what you wanna do next. Take advantage of some of these things because as you do these things, it'll start getting your brain moving in terms of what you need to do next. Good luck to you. You're gonna make this thing happy and I'm really happy you decided to go out on your own. Oh, 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 oh,